Welcome to part three of the Costa Rica miniseries. I'm Koa, and in this episode we will learn a bit about Costa Rican volcanoes and their rainforests, along with the associated biodiversity as we follow me and my companion, Ben, on an intense hike up a dormant volcano, surrounded by a lively rainforest that ascends into an almost surreal cloud forest. For our eyes some surprise, a marvelous spectacle awaits us within the misty summit's crater. Costa Rica, a country no bigger than West Virginia, has the most biodiversity per landmass than any other nation in our world. This means that more species exist per square kilometer than anywhere else on Earth. At least 840 species of birds call Costa Rica home during some point of the year. Around 240 mammals exist, of which 100 or so are bats. Over 220 species of reptiles can be found slithering and lounging around. 190 or so amphibians have been classified, and 130 freshwater fishes exist, where a thousand more can be found in the surrounding oceans. Costa Rica represents an estimated 200 to 250,000 arthropods. Those are insects, spiders, scorpions, and many other invertebrates. There are more than 10,000 species of plants, over a thousand of which are orchids. Rainforests worldwide contain millions of undiscovered species yet to be classified, so it's safe to say that Costa Rica, a country that is more than half covered in forests and jungle, contains a plethora of species awaiting to be classified. Costa Rica is very mountainous, with the four main mountain ranges running down its central spine. In the north sits the Guancaste Cordillera, followed by the Tilaran Cordillera around Lake Arenal. The central cordillera is just north of the capital San Jose, and in the south is the Talamanca Cordillera. There are almost 200 volcanoes, and five are still active. Irasu, Poas, Arenal, Rincón de la Vieja, and Turrialba. Important historical eruptions were Irasu in 1963, Arenal from 1968 to 2004, and Turrialba with notable eruptions in 2014 to January of 2017. My travels took me to the green rainforest of Cerro Chato, the dormant volcano adjacent to the Arenal volcano, which had destroyed three small villages when it had erupted in July of 1968. Although eruptive activity has diminished since 2008, Arenal has the potential for further eruptions, and the loose boulders, many the size of cars, make the volcano a dangerous terrain to wander upon, therefore hiking a Reynal is not allowed. Rainforests are diminishing worldwide, mainly attributed to logging operations. Costa Rica has done well to eliminate deforestation, now protecting more than 25% of the land. Let's take a look at the basic structure of a rainforest. The bottom is described as the forest floor. This is a dark layer, receiving only about 2% sunlight, where the leaves, fallen trees, and other organic matter decay, readily consumed by bacteria and fungi. Above that layer is the understory. Multitudes of insects inhabit this layer, along with many species of animals, such as monkeys, birds, amphibians, reptiles. Starting at about 30 meters, or 98 feet, the canopy layer begins. This layer houses the most biodiversity, and the foliage, or collective leaves, are canopying the lower layers, intensely competing for every ray of sunlight. Only about 5% of sunlight is able to penetrate the canopy layer. Jaguars and sloths can also be found in the richness of the canopy. Near 45 to 55 meters, or 148 to 180 feet, the emergence are found. These are trees with strong trunks and thick leaves that pierce the canopy layer towering above the rainforest. These massive trees are the size of skyscrapers. Eagles, butterflies, birds, and even some species of monkeys can be found this high. Often the terms jungle and rainforest are used synonymously, or interchangeably. But the jungle, composed of vines, shrubs, and small trees, is the successive result after a rainforest canopy is destroyed. So within these forests, these cloud forests, there are epiphytes on pretty much every tree. And that just means epiphytes are just plants that grow on top of other plants. And that goes all the way up from the ground up to the canopy. 
The epiphytic plants are engaging in a form of symbiosis known as commensalism, where one organism benefits without affecting the other. There is an argument in the world of biology that commensalism cannot really exist in a pure form, for any organism interacting with another will have an effect on that other. An example that I like to explore is the trees with the conspicuous and fascinating buttress roots. There are many theories as to why these tall and laterally extending roots are formed, one of which being that they endure stress from poor soil stability and the extra weight from epiphytes. The host trees that have the epiphytic plants are bearing the burden of carrying much extra weight. Therefore, I would agree that this symbiotic relationship is not a pure form of commensalism. As we hiked, I was scouring the forest floor and understory, seeing a mass diversity of plants, knowing that in the canopy far above there was another world teeming with animals that we would be unable to see. Only in recent decades have scientists begun examining the rich biodiversity of the rainforest canopy. It truly is another world, as foreign to humans as the abyssal depths of the oceans. The mate-seeking tree frogs and the chatty birds were often heard, but often strained from our line of sight in the density of the rainforest. The ambiance offered serenity, a pleasant peacefulness, and many moments of awe as I dared to comprehend the complexities of evolutionary processes as all these organisms interacted in a confined system. The hike to El Chato is definitely a hard one, especially when the trail is wet. A lot of steep incline with muddy banks. Some of the trails covered, some you have to cross over logs. It's a lot of fun though. A lot of work. Ben and I adamantly progressed up steep inclines and muddy paths. When we were reaching the top, clouds began to surround us. We were entering the elevations of the cloud forests at around a thousand meters or 3,300 feet. In almost two hours, we had ascended into the skies, still surrounded by the lively rainforest. So after at least a couple hours of hiking a fairly arduous trail, you will be rewarded with this vista. The Green Lake Center in the crater is about 500 meters wide receiving the unique green color from the mineral compositions of the volcanic rocks and surrounding forest. Swimming in the crater is not recommended, but many locals, or ticos, often do. And of course, I could not resist. After swimming to the center, with the clouds satiating the tops of the forest, I ventured back to the shallows seeking fishes in the low visibility water. I found a few kerosens and many tadpoles, but Ben and I needed to venture back down the dormant volcano and prepare for our next adventure. More to come from Costa Rica. An awesome fishing day atop the country's largest lake, some awesome deep water dives, and other Costa Rican wonders. Subscribing is free and easy. Check out my website for more information and the photos of Costa Rica. Feel free to contact me with any questions or comments. I humbly accept any donations so that I may more efficiently learn and teach about our world. Thank you. Keep loving the beautiful chaos of nature. Mmm, rico. <laughs>